So I've put myself up to almost 19 million, which is really good. Now, I'm going to be honest, I cheated a little bit because there was a mission that just kept repeating and it was testing this rocket. And all I had to do is literally launch it. Uh, you know, like, well, it was like a two-stage thing. I had to launch it, I had to switch to the other stage, and ignite the other one at 10,000, or it was like 11,000 meters or something like that, which is really easy to do, and it pretty much took no fuel at all to get it up there in the first place, and it was a small engine, and it was giving me like 100,000. Uh, actually, it was like 100 and it was 132,000 something or other. So all I did was I just kept repeating the mission until it finally stopped giving it to me. So I did that probably about 10 times. So that definitely helped get me a lot of that money. However, we're going to need it because like I said before, we're not necessarily going straight into the Aurora, putting that up. I would like to put it into orbit, but I've decided, uh, especially now that I'm going to wait until 1.0 comes out just in case things break. So I want I want to wait for that update to come out <clears throat> before we get uh, before we get it up into space. Just just so it's not wasting a ton of money and breaking. Plus we gotta get our, our proper crew in on the Aurora as well. So I figured I would load it up as a little bit of a reminder because I also need to look at it. Uh, the Aurora is alphabetically there. So I've been working on a shuttle for this thing and I need to figure out how exactly, like how big it needs to be and what kind of fittings I've done here. Okay, so my fitting is, uh, I'm looking at this one right here for that. Okay, so that is roughly a, I don't know, that's like a good wingspan, you know, if I was to put like a good shuttle in there. All right, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, I can take the cargo you know thing itself like the docking area itself and uh measure it up but i need to know that because we're going to take a look at the shuttle that i have been developing and that we have a lot of tests to do so this is what we're going to be working on for a bit here uh which is called the thor where is it at it's thor s1 s1 is the shuttle version one we're going to have multiple types of this shuttle so this is the Thor. Uh, it's quite rad. Hold on, let me. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I want to retract the ladder. We're not. Re retract ladder. Retract ladder. Retract ladder. What if I moved it? Re retract. Retract ladder. It's broken. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, let's just forget about that for the time being, and go. Where is it? Uh, docking base. So it looks like it looks like it would just fit. All right, that's perfect. Oh, that is awesome! I love it. I love just how like perfectly fit it is. Now here's here's what I've done. All right, so let me let me show you what the Thor looks like. Um, height wise, we would we would be fine because the landing gear would be up and it would be a bit lower down. Um, I probably will adjust this wing in that case though. Okay. So let's, let's do that. Let's, before I go into it, I, I'm going to forget if I don't, I need to change the length of this wing to be a bit lower and the length of this one to be a bit lower. And we're going to change where this is sitting. Um, do I have the right one grabbed? I do. Uh, I want it like that. I do want some space on the bottom there. Uh, I can change the length a little bit though. Yep. Okay. And then offset again. Just a little there. That's enough space on the bottom. Perfect. All right. So let me try that one more time. Let's grab this, All right? Uh, let's, no, that's not what I wanted. It needs to be centered. That is a perfect amount of space for this sucker. Perfect. And obviously we would have two of them, right? So it would sit in there like that. Oh, that's so cool. I really like it. Okay, so what is the Thor? Well, it's designed this one, the S1, uh, which is called Shuttle 4 for whatever reason up here. Thor. You saw it when I loaded it. S1-1. 
save. Uh, it probably was my code name that I used when I transferred it over from my test game. So it utilizes a backwards docking port, right? So it's on the butt. So basically you reverse it into the, the cargo bay there and it will dock with the docking port that I have established inside of that Aurora docking port. So it it's really cool in the way that it works and the fact that you just back it up. So you don't have to worry about top and bottom height happening because if I put the docking port on the top, I'd have to worry about this top wing um, affecting you know, how high that docking port needs to be. If I put it on the bottom, likewise. If I put it on the front, I wouldn't be able to run this style. Um, so the only real logical place is to put it on the back. You could do it like on part of the sides and have it pop out, but I, this is just the easiest way. So you have it on the back, it backs up into the port uh, and it locks in. It's currently uh, completely equipped. There's a few things that we need to add to it, which we will do for our testing. But it's using these engines, the uh, airy engines, which ones, where are they? Uh, so it's got 290 max thrust. And this is the one that I've, I've mentioned before that um, the more airflow, the more efficient it is. But the less airflow, the more it just turns into a rocket. So it goes through fuel rather quickly in rocket form, but it is also a multi-staged type shuttle. So this isn't the final form of the S1. The S1 is probably only going to have rockets and not these engines, but for testing purposes on everything else we're using, these engines, right? Pretty sure that makes sense to everybody. So uh, in the future, it probably will be a couple of the nuclear engines and then probably a couple of these. So that way they're on the back and it is this one, the S1 will be primarily a non-atmospheric shuttle, as in it goes to moons and it lands on planets without an atmosphere and then it comes back. So that is why it, it has these, which are the, you know, the rockets that shoot down. I think each of these are 20, uh, yeah, 20 is the max thrust on them, which is pretty good. It's not bad, and they're facing down because it's not going to land on its butt. We don't have any landing uh, capabilities back there. It's going to land straight up and down just like this, just like how it is. And when it takes off on a moon, it will push itself back up with these little tiny rockets, and then it will readjust itself and use the main rockets to get back into orbit. It's pretty simple, basically, which is also why the S1 has rockets on the front. So you don't have to spin it around to slow it down. You just activate the front rockets. They start slowing it down. You deactivate them. You deactivate the back rockets, obviously, before you've done the front ones. Then you activate the the pushing down ones so it can land, you know, how it is right now. It can land level. And then it can take off that way as well. So it, it has some air breathing capabilities at the moment. Uh, just because of testing purposes and then I'm running the dual wing setup so it has a procedural wing set up on the top and on the bottom of the craft which allows me to get a lot of surface area down here there's multiple wings down here but it allows me to get a lot of surface area on these so uh, it generates a lot more lift right so that's a really clever way of doing it it has RCS, obviously, for docking purposes. Uh, RCS is set up all properly, so it would be fairly easy to dock it to the Aurora. It would be a challenge, but it would be easier than, you know, if I was docking like a rocket to it. So there's a few things here to take a look at. We, ha we have our obvious lighting. I have a way to communicate back to Kerbin if I need to. If, you know, these guys need help. It has these little RCS ports. Now... They're, they run off of liquid fuel and oxidizer, but what it does is these engines, if you download this mod, these engines currently, when you get to a certain altitude, make your craft flip backward. So these point downward, like, you know, like out like this. So that way it keeps the nose down instead of flipping backwards. And I also have the exact opposite back here. So if it starts going forward, it will readjust itself as well. It's got parachutes because that's our current landing way for um, uh, atmosphere, right? So if we're, if we're in an atmosphere, we want to use the parachutes as the way that we're landing. And it has air brakes 
for that purpose as well. Now, it's got all that stuff on it. Uh, if I were to have one of the Thor shuttles, like, I guess I would call it the Loki, right? That would be kind of cool to have the Thor and the Loki. Like, the Loki is the, the air-breathing one. The Thor is the, uh, the moon lander. So to have that, like, as two different ones and then have the loadouts different, like, no air brakes on the Thor, but on the Loki have the, um, the air brakes and all that and have air breathing engines. Now, it also has all of our science packed away in here in a clever little spot on both sides. So we have plenty of it. We can hit two places up. Got the science junior back there. You can barely see it. In fact, I can get in there. Right there, it's got two batteries. And then on the front of that is the... Uh, air intake which is attaching it all together and then in this little cubby hole you have in fact the uh the way that we're going to generate electricity there's two of them in there on each side we have this sensor package and we have this sensor package one is for atmosphere and one is not i'll show you how those work when we get out onto the landing uh pad and then uh the mystery good container of course now what i could do and what i do plan to do but i just haven't gotten there yet is to add the rest of our stuff so like the chem cam and uh, possibly even a space telescope, but that's probably not so needed. That will be a completely different thing. There's some RCS fuel here. Uh, inside of the wings, you can see like, whoa, like right here, I got some struts that's kind of all holding it together. Uh, landing gear like usual, lights and everything. It runs really well, and I have a really complicated control scheme for this because I've got a lot of uh, action groups sitting here, and we actually have a launch uh, system and everything. And I'll sh I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna we're gonna do our first test, which is an atmospheric flight. We want to make sure that it flies right. We can use our parachutes to land if we wanted to, or we could test the landing gear. One of which is a bit more risky. We don't, haven't really done too much testing on our landing gear here. So here's what we do. This is our our procedure for for launching this thing. We have to turn SAS on. We turn all the engines off, and then we go through and we activate everything. Boom! That activates those four. Then the two up front, the reverse thrusters, those activate. All right. Uh, or do they? There they go. Uh, then all of these, so our landing thrusters, those all go. Now what we do is we go through each individual thing, we make sure we can turn it all off. So the back ones, I hit one, it shuts down the engines. Uh, two will shut or turn them back on. The front ones, I hit three, it shuts down those. Four will turn it back on. For all of these, I hit five or six. Six turns them off. Five is my air brakes. So I have those separated on my keyboard and seven will turn all those back on. So we wanna turn those off, we want to hit uh, two, which will turn on our actual engines in the back. Okay, good. We want to make sure our lights are working. They are. We got fancy blue lighting for our engines. It's very, very pretty. Uh, I want to show you how the sensor packages work. So I can I can uh, do seismic data, pressure data, gravity, and temperature on that one. And on this one, I could just run an atmosphere analysis. Uh, from here, I can pretty easily just kind of find my way and click on the Science Junior or on the Containment Goo. So there's a, uh, or the Containment Unit for the, the Mystery Goo. There's a lot of stuff here. This thing is pretty well engineered. I took a lot of time to do this. Um, watched a lot of F1 in the meantime while I was doing so. Okay, so let's do our launch. Uh, all of our guys are looking like they're having fun. We got Bob, and Rome. New rod, the, the guys are all here. Okay, so we want to go up. We're gonna turn off our brakes. And this thing gives us a lot of thrust. So you'll see that we take off fairly rapidly. Frame rate is a little low because there's a lot of pieces on this thing, a lot of parts. And the lighting kind of hurts that. All right, we turn our RCS on for stability and it will allow us to lift off. Now this thing, can and when we launch it into upper atmosphere you'll see that it does a very good job of just going straight into space uh it almost runs out of fuel because it's, this one's not meant for getting out of the atmosphere of Kerbin in particular which does take a lot of thrust and fuel and all that uh but this one is you know we're just gonna fly it around it actually does fly very well it's incredibly stable and the best part about it is it's not like freaking out at me. 
it just it does a good job of just flying and that's the most important part of designing a shuttle like this especially one that's going to have multiple functionalities when you put different engines in them um yeah it's just it's one of those also all of our control panels or control uh, surfaces are on the back here so you have those for up and down and then there's uh, in the middle of the engine there is a little bit of a a yaw is that right right yeah because this is pitch it's gotta be yaw yes okay so then there's the, the back one as well. So this thing just, like I said, it flies very, very well. So what we're gonna do is we're not going to risk the lives of our poor Kerbals here, trying to land this thing with actual landing gear. That doesn't need to be done at the moment. That is not part of this test. Although the weird texture on the ground from the lights is kind of annoying. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the sucker up and pick up some speed. We want it above a thousand meters, and ideally we want it kind of above flat ground, which will be off over this direction. All right, so now we're gonna do this, level it out. This is our first test, making sure that our parachutes are going to function properly. So we're going to turn that off, and we let it glide for a while. We get it so that way oh by the way i've in testing i've made sure that this gliding works fairly well but it's got so much weight to the shuttle that it tends to want to fall straight up and down after a while so what we're doing is we're putting it you know the nose down to keep our horizontal velocity going as we then pull up a bit and we're gonna hit our shoots these are all cleverly placed as well, so it's all balanced as far as weight goes, which is very, very important. So when it switches to the open chutes, like the fully open, uh, you'll notice it, it does a really good job of keeping the the aircraft level. And whoop, there we go. And I'm not touching the keyboard. Boom. A lot of the weight is in the front because we haven't burned off our fuel, so we got to keep that in mind. But that's why we have the RCS, so that's part of that. Uh, we want to... Five is our air brakes, right? Yeah, okay, so we want to hit seven. Okay, our, our thrust is off. We want to hit seven. We want to hit one. All right, all the complicated little procedures that we need to go through. We want to thrust up a little bit just to slow ourselves down. And boom, just kind of bounces and breaks. It's beautiful, isn't it? This thing is just beautiful. It's well engineered and I'm really surprised that I've managed to pull something like this off. I'm really proud of this one. All right, that was our first test. Now we have our next test of getting this sucker into uh, the atmosphere or the higher atmosphere and into orbit and see kind of what re-entry is like. That's the next test that we need to do. Thank you.